Well, hello, everybody. It's EK from EK Gorman Designs, and I am coming in and joining up with a bunch of my friends for a Christmas in July, a craft collabs hop. There's a bunch of us getting together and creating Christmas projects in the month of July because, you know, it's only six months away from Christmas, and Lord, we should be scared. So today I thought I'd do some real mixed media. Well, not real mixed media. Some faux mixed media. I'd mix a bunch of different things together and call it a card. So I started with some distress paints, and I know you're thinking, oh my goodness, we're back to eight years ago? When did somebody start using distress paints again? Yeah, I'm the person who hasn't stopped using them. Uh, my distress paints are a little old. Some of the colors are no longer quite the color they one thinks and knows when they think of distress, but I still like my distress paints. The nibs are a little, a little dry. I need to replace all the caps a little bit, but I don't care. I still like them. I'm the one. And I'm doing a smudging technique where I put two colors down onto my craft mat, spray it with a little bit of water, and then press some good mixed media paper into the distress paints. And look, what is it? What do you see? Yep, it's an ocean wave. Look how cool that is. I dried it with my heat gun and then came back and pulled out the uh, festive berries and the picked raspberry and I want to say the worn lipstick and did the exact same technique except for I pulled it through the paint differently. This is where you really truly see how dry the nib is of this one. Um, first of all, it came off when I took the lid off and secondly, there was, there was a lot of dry crusties. So to solve this problem, I simply grabbed a paintbrush opened the cap up, pushed all the crusties away, and just painted some paint onto my craft mat. It works just the same effectively. And now you get to watch me move all the dry pink crusties away, spray the ink a little bit, or not the ink, the paint a little bit. One of the reasons I still love my distress paints is it does some of the cool techniques that distress is known and loved for, like when you spray water on it, it gets that cool distress feel. But when distress paint dries, it's permanent. You can put all the water you want over a distress paint. When it's dry, it's locked in. It's no longer moving. So I don't have to glaze or... It also has an opacity that most distress does not. Um, so yeah. So with the, the, the pinks and the reds, I actually sprayed some water still on the wet paint and pulled my heat gun out and started drying it off. I had some places where water had built up a little more than I like. So I dabbed it with my paper towel and actually loved the technique that I got with it. So there you go. I've got two distressed backgrounds. Now time for a little stamping. I'm using the Avery L and this isn't yet retired but it's so almost retired stamp set. I think they actually still have some on Avery L but it's so discounted. I however love this stamp set. It is, I don't know, it's exactly what Christmas in July is. I lived in San Diego for a bunch of years and like to me, I know San Diego doesn't have real palm trees and flamingos but when it's 70 degrees outside on Christmas Day, this is what you think of. So the stamp set for me is just still awesome. I wanted to add a little Copic coloring to it, and this is in no way, shape, or form great Copic coloring. It's just adding some color to the stamp set because I'm putting it over those really vividly bold backgrounds. It needed some very vividly bold colored images. So I started with a combination, and it's an odd little combination of blue-greens, but it, in the end, I think has a really, really cool blend. I think they flow really nicely into one another. And then with the greens for the palm trees, because the colors in the background are so bold, I didn't want to do what I would usually traditionally do for a palm tree color. I went with a significantly bolder green than I normally would, just because... Um, yeah, it needs to be able to pop on that bright pink background. Now you may be thinking, this is the craziest stamp scene I've ever seen. Uh, I actually own the dies to these, so no, in fact, it is not a crazy stamp scene. It is stamped because I knew I had dies for each of these pieces, and I was going to die cut them out and put them on top of that inked, I keep saying ink, of that painted background. So, yeah, I really just stamped this out in a way that I knew I could run it through my die cutter in just one pass with all the different dies attached to all the different pieces. For this boat, I really, really wanted boat feel. Like, I wanted an actual um, wood grain feel. I totally missed the mark, but it's fine. I used the same combination of browns on the coconuts and on the boat just because I wanted your brain not to freak out if I had dark coconuts and light 
you know, I had a bright blue boat or something. So I just mixed my colors in a way that they all felt to go together. For both of my flamingos, I uh, used the same combinations of pinks. These are a really simple combination. It's just the 21, 23, and 25 of RV. And it's because it's not too bold. I think the pinks and the Copics are just way too bright. And 90% of the time when I'm wanting to do pink, I don't actually reach for an RV. I reach for either a red or an earth tone because huh, I think the pinks are a better tone, tonal quality and a better value. But in this case, the 21, 23, and 26, 25, 25 are better. For the sailboat, I knew it was Christmas and I needed to tie it back to Christmas just a wee bit. So I pulled out a combination of reds and just created a light red sail and a light red Santa cap. Yeah, maybe I missed, I, I might have gone a little too far tropical with this one, but I think in the end I get it back to Christmas, sort of. I don't know if the lights on the boat and the tree are enough to scream Christmas. The Santa hat is. I think the Santa hat absolutely screams Christmas. But yeah, it, I'm using palm trees, so it's always difficult. There's no snow on the ground. It's hard to say Christmas when there's no snow on the ground. So I here are all the pieces I have. I've got the tiny flamingo, the big flamingo, the ocean waves, the palm trees, the boat, and the big pink background. I fussy cut out the waves. Yes, I fussy cut out the waves. You're capable of fussy cutting out your painted image. And I, as much as I hate fussy cutting, it was the right choice to do here because I think the waves have a nice textual view. And I taped it down using score tape because I really needed a good solid tape with this mixed media paper. I did not realize it at the time, but the mixed media paper I was working on was cut to only four inches, not to four and a quarter inches. So it's just a little bit short on my card. This is what I get for using leftover pieces that I'd cut before and forgot I'd cut them too small. Yeah, I try to reuse the good card stuck as much as humanly possible. And in this case, I had a little bit of a boo-boo. In the end though, I think it works out really, really well. So make sure you stick around to the very end of the video to see how I correct this short cardstock piece. I realized I forgot to color the lights in and the beaks in, so I added just tints of yellow to it and a little bit of black to the tips of the beak, and then realized I needed sand. So I pulled out my Nouveau Mousse, and using a really cheap and quick mat underneath the mousse, yeah, that, that's what the post-it note is, it's just a quick, quick and cheap mat, I added the Nouveau Mousse, and this is just the old school embellishment mousse, so this is the original formulation, and I'm still a fan. I'm still a big fan of the Nouveau Mousse. Now that the mousse is dried, it's time to add everything to the card. So in the foreground you have sand, beach, sky. Yes, it is a bright pink sky. And I'm okay with that. And I added the boat to the background. I am now going to take and pop up with some three-dimensional tape the pine trees. I almost called them pine cones. They're not even pine trees. Wow, pine. It's Christmas, so I'm in the pine mood. No, they're palm. Palm trees. I'm going to pop up the palm trees and lagoon in the midground, meaning in the middle of my scene here that I'm creating. Wow, English language. I'm really struggling today. It's just, it's just, yeah. But I'm going to pop it up so it's slightly raised above the boat, thus creating some dimension and depth. I cut up what was hanging off the card. And finally, with the giant flamingo, I almost called it a penguin because I'm such in a Christmas mode, I put just a little bit more three-dimensional tape behind his head so he was even with the background. But because of the lagoon and the sand being raised, I didn't have to put three-dimensional tape there. Here's how I corrected the weird white line. I grab some glitter paper. Glitter paper solves almost any problem, right? This is a pale green, which I thought went nicely with the pale red sailboat and thus bringing in my Christmas colors of red and green and make it in at holiday along with those pine trees and p penguins. Yep, that's exactly where I'm at today. So with, along with those palm trees and flamingos, it's going to be a really weird day.
I finished the card off with a simple sentiment that says warm holiday wishes because I think it's the right look for this tropical Christmas card. Thanks for tuning in today. All of the information is down in the blurb below on how to hop and how to continue along. Thank you so much for picking it, for joining in and let me know in the comments below if you ever struggle with English language as much as I do because today has just been one of those days with pine trees and flamingos. Thanks for watching and until then, happy crafting.